Hi boys and girls, happy Tuesday. Today is April 7th and this is our um, read aloud day for chapter 11. And um, we're basically gonna get right into it, but I wanted to remind you guys, um, at the beginning of the year we talked quite a bit about a theme. And so that's really like bigger picture what's really happening here. And so I want you guys to be thinking about that as we're reading today. And, um, and just think about what we left off with on Friday was the end of chapter 10, which was um, where Harvey had undergone quite a few changes, if you'll remember. And, um, and he was really struggling with some things and he had some outside influences from other characters in the story. And so he really went through some changes, but I want you to really think about big, big, big picture. Okay, what's the theme here? What's really happening? Okay, and we'll talk about some things that you might write about um, for today's response question at the end of the video. Okay, so for now, we're just going to go ahead and start with a read aloud because this book is so fantastic. I know you guys are um, enjoying it as much as I am. And um, just remember at the end of chapter 10, they left off in the kitchen um, after this whole incident with Harvey and Wendell and Basically, you know, Wendell was freaking out and Harvey chose um, not to say anything about the fact that um, that Wendell was really kind of trying to sell him out even with the vampire, right? Which was Harvey. Okay, so now we have chapter 11. Sorry, that was chapter 10. <laughs> we, have, we have chapter 11, which is called Turnabout. And um, that might be like two different sides of Harvey, or maybe it's Harvey and Wendell. I'm not really sure. They look really similar here. So we've only seen Harvey in one other picture, so I'm not sure. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started because I know that you guys are loving this book as much as I am. Neither Wendell nor Lulu was around the following day. Mrs. Griffin said she'd seen them both before breakfast, and then they disappeared. So Harvey was left to his own devices. He tried not to think about what had happened the night before, but he couldn't help himself. Snatches of conversation kept coming back and he puzzled over them all day long. What had Jive meant, for instance, when he told Harvey that turning him into a vampire was not so much a game as an education? What kind of lesson had he learned by jumping off the roof and scaring Wendell? And all that stuff about soul stealers and how they had to be served, what had that meant? <clears throat> was it Mr. Hood that Jive had been speaking of, that great power they all had to serve? If Hood was somewhere in the house, why hadn't anyone, Lulu, Wendell, or himself, encountered him? Harvey had quizzed his friends about Hood and had the same story from them both. They heard no footfalls, no whispers, no laughter. If Mr. Hood was indeed there, where was he hiding and why? So many questions, so few answers. And then, as if these mysteries weren't enough, another came along to vex him. In the late afternoon, lounging in the shade of the treehouse, he heard a yell of frustration and peered through the leaves to see Wendell racing across the lawn. He was dressed in a windbreaker and boots, even though it was sweltering hot, and he was stamping around like a madman. Harvey shouted to him, but his call went either unheard or ignored, so he climbed down and pursued Wendell around the side of the house. He found him in the orchard, red-faced and sweaty. What's going on, he said. I can't get out, Wendell said, <clears throat> grinding a half-rotted apple underfoot. I want to leave, Harvey, but there's no way out. Of course there is. I've been trying for hours and hours, and I tell you, the mist keeps sending me back the way I came. Hey, calm down. I want to go home, Harvey, Wendell said, close to tears now. Last night was too much for me. <clears throat> that thing came after my blood, and I know you don't believe me. I do, said Harvey. Honest, I do. You do? For sure. Well then, maybe you should leave too, because if I go, it'll come after you. I don't think so, said Harvey. I've been kidding myself about this place, Wendell said. It's dangerous. Oh, yeah. I know it seems like everything is perfect, but Harvey interrupted him. Maybe you should keep your voice down. He said, we should talk about this quietly, in private. Like where, Wendell said, wild-eyed. The whole place is watching us and listening to us. Don't you feel it? 
Why would it do that? <clears throat> I don't know, Wendell snapped. But last night, I thought, if I don't leave, I'm going to die here. I'll just disappear one night or go crazy like Lulu. He dropped his voice to a whisper. He dropped his voice <clears throat> to a whisper. And I got lost. There we go. We're not the first, you know. What about all the clothes upstairs? And the coats and the shoes and the hats? They belong to kids like us. Harvey shuddered. Had he played trick or treat in a murdered boy's clothes? I want to get out of here, Wendell said, tears running down his face, but there's no way out. If there's a way in, there must be a way out, Harvey reasoned. We'll go to the wall. With that, he marched off, Wendell in tow, around to the front of the house and down the gen gentle slope of the lawn. The mist wall looked perfectly harmless as they approached it. Be careful, Wendell warned. It's got some tricks up its sleeve. Harvey slowed a step, expecting the wall to twitch or even reach for him. But it did nothing. Bolder now, he strode into the mist, fully expecting to emerge on the other side. But by some trick or other, he was turned around without even being aware of it and delivered out of the wall with the house in front of him. What happened, he said to himself, puzzled. He stepped back into the mist. The same thing occurred. <clears throat> in he went and out he came again, facing the opposite direction. He tried again and again and again, but the same trick was worked upon him every time until Harvey was as frustrated as Wendell had been a half an hour before. Now do you believe me, Wendell said. Yep. So what do we do? Well, we don't yell about it. Harvey whispered, we just get on with the day. Pretend like we're giving up leaving. I'm going to do a little looking around. He began his investigations as soon as they got back into the house by going in search of Lulu. Her bedroom door was closed. He knocked, then called her. There was no reply, so he tried the handle. The door was unlocked. Lulu, he called, it's Harvey. She wasn't there but he was relieved to see that her bed had been slept in and that she'd apparently been playing with her pets recently. The doors to the doll's house were open and the lizards were everywhere underfoot. There was one strangeness, however. The sound of running water led him to the bathroom where he found the bath almost full, almost to brimming, and Lulu's clothes scattered in the puddles on the tile. Have you seen Lulu? He asked Mrs. Griffin when he got downstairs. Not in the last few hours, she replied, but she's been keeping to herself. Mrs. Griffin looked hard at Harvey. I wouldn't pay too much mind if I were you, child, she said. Mr. Hood doesn't like inquisitive guests. I was only wondering where she got to, Harvey said. Mrs. Griffin frowned, her tongue working against her pale cheek as though she wanted to speak, but didn't dare. Anyway, Harvey went on, deliberately goading Mrs. Griffin, I don't believe Mr. Hood exists. Now you be careful, she said, her voice, her voice and frown deepening. You don't want to talk about Mr. Hood that way. I've been here days and days, Harvey said, realizing as he spoke that he'd lost count of his time in the house and I haven't seen him once. Where is he? Now Mrs. Griffin came at Harvey with her hands raised and for a moment he thought she was going to strike him, but instead, she took hold of his shoulders and shook him. Please, child, she said, be content with what you know. You're here to enjoy yourself for a little time. And child, it's such a little time. It flies by. Oh Lord, how it flies. It's just a few weeks, Harvey said. I'm not gonna stay here forever. Now it was he who stared at her. Or am I? He said. Stop, she told him. You think I am here forever, don't you? he said, shaking off her grip. What is this place, Mrs. Griffin? Is it some kind of prison? She shook her head. Don't tell me lies, he said. It's stupid. We're locked up here, aren't we? Now, though she was shaking with fear from head to foot, she dared to make a tiny nod of her head. All of us? He asked. Again, she nodded. You too? Yes, she whispered. Me too. And there's no way out. Believe me, if you try to escape again, Karna will come after you. Karna, he said, remembering the name of the conversation between Jive and Mar. He's up there, Mrs. Griffin said, on the roof. 
That's where the four of them live. Rictus, Matt, Karna, and Jive. You know, I've met them all but Karna. Pray you never do, said Mrs. Griffin. Now listen to me, Harvey. I've seen many children come and go through this house. Some of them foolish, some of them selfish, some sweet, some brave. But you, you are one of the brightest souls I have ever laid eyes on. I want to take you... I want you to take what joy you can from being here. Use the hours well, because they'll be fewer than you think. Harvey listened patiently to this. Then, when she'd finished, he said, I still want to meet Mr. Hood. Mr. Hood is dead, Mrs. Griffin said, exasperated by his persistence. Dead? You swear? I swear, she replied. On the grave of my poor clue cat, I swear. Mr. Hood is dead, so don't ask about him ever again. This was the first time Mrs. Griffin had ever come close to giving Harvey an order, and though he wanted to press her further, he decided not to. Instead, he said he was sorry for bringing up the subject and wouldn't do it again, then left her to her secret sorrows. Ooh, boys and girls, just when I thought the last chapter was weird enough, it gets even more deep. It gets even more detailed. I want you guys to start thinking about what all we've been talking about with fantasy, how that setting is so important. I almost think of the setting here, this house, as like a different character because really the house kind of has a personality of its own. So, whew, all these problems we've been encountering, all these character traits and flaws and, and almost kind of redemptions too, some, somewhat from Harvey. Man, this is such a good book. Um, so theme, bigger picture. I wanted to go over our um, question of the day. Before we do that, um, I wanted to just go over a couple of things. So you guys are logging in every day to Canvas. Um, and each day there, if there's a Zoom meeting, you'll find a link on that main page, right? And then you're doing the quizzes under the quiz tab. You're also filling in the reading log portion of class, which you can just do that one time a week. If you want to just go ahead and fill in one form, because I know that if not, if you go in every day, you have to fill in the same information every day. You can do that if you want, certainly. Um, but if you want to wait till Friday and log everything in that one form on the main page in Canvas, I'm fine with that too. Also, if you need a hard copy of your reading log, just shoot me an email and let me know, okay? And I'll be glad to send that to you. All right, so for assignment today, of course, log into Canvas. You're going to answer the question of the day, fill out your reading log, and our question of the day, I think is really good. Um, okay, so this one is just a stop and jot, okay? So what is one life lesson you think Harvey might be learning, okay? So I've put some sentence stems on here. If you want to use these, you certainly can. You don't have to, but this might be helpful for some of you, okay? So sometimes in life, and then finish that sentence, right? Or sometimes people, da-da-da, finish that sentence, right? Okay, we're getting so good into this story. I hope you guys are enjoying your own fantasy books too. And have a happy Tuesday. I'll see you tomorrow on YouTube and on Zoom. No Zoom today, Tuesday. Have a great day, guys.